Hey guys, working on the main cab again today. Uh, just got finished with our fluorescent light fixture. Got it mounted in the cabinet and uh, kind of jumping around doing different things at the moment. Just whatever kind of suits me at the moment. And uh, need to start working on the top of the control panel here. This is the board that's going to mount to the top. So this will basically be your control panel. And of course there's the box we built several videos back. And uh, don't know if I'll get to... Uh, connecting this up to the box with the hinge today because I need to buy a few screws to go along with that hinge and I don't have any that are suitable right now but uh, what I need to do is figure out the layout and uh, you can see here I've got some printouts and I got my wife to print these up for me I uh, sent her an email at work and they've got a laser printer and she just printed these up to uh, actual size that they're supposed to be and uh, I got these from a site called Slagcoin and uh, on that site, it hasn't been updated in a good while, but let's see if I can get us to focus here. Anyway, if you go to uh, www.slagcoin.com, just simply one link there that you click on. And once you click on it, it takes you into the main site. And uh, there are several links down here that you can follow. And the links will take you to all different things that you might want to know about building your own control panel or a controller, like an arcade controller, in case you wanted to use one with a console or pretty much anything. And it shows you everything from uh, dimensions and stuff, uh, parts and components of different types and styles of uh, joysticks and buttons, uh, wiring, materials, all kinds of stuff that you might need. And uh, I went onto this side and went to a section of it that actually shows you... Uh, these printouts here and you can print them at uh, different pixels per inch and stuff like that uh, they have like you know the ones here that are shown on the side are 72 pixels an inch and you can see right there underneath them you can pick different versions that you might want to print out at 96 100 and 300 pixels per inch and I just went ahead and did 300 pixels per inch not really that important as long as everything is true to size and uh, these uh, right here are showing the Japanese standards. The upper one is the standard for Player One on an Astro CD or uh, similar Net CD versus CD cabinets and, and uh, Blast CDs with a little modification to the button placement some there. And the lower one is for Player Two on the same type of cabinets. They differ slightly. The upper one is uh, it's kind of I'd say curved like that slightly compared to this lower one. Now if you took this lower one, if you notice the four center buttons form a perfect square. If you took and tilted it like that slightly, then you would get this uh, same representation up here. Now the joystick position will be slightly different there. And they do that because player one and player two standing in front of the cab, they're, they're actually going to be facing the cabinet slightly different and their hand and wrist position and everything will be slightly different if they're both crowded in in front of an arcade machine. At least that's my thinking on it. And uh, the button placement is really very similar. And if you wanted to build your own cabinet with this type of layout, you could like, let's say for instance, use uh, just the player two layout or just the player one. And you could set both of them that way, whatever you prefer. But I'm thinking of going with this because uh, it is a little more ergonomic and there's less strain on your wrist and your fingers trying to reach for the buttons as compared to the American type layout. And let me scroll up here. It's got lots of layouts on here. Well, there's more of an American type layout there. And uh, it's real easy to find buttons. If you're not, you know, looking down at your buttons, you can just feel for them with your fingers in this type of a uh, formation, but it's uh, not very ergonomic because your fingers don't lay all perfectly with your fingertips lined up, you know. You've got a little curvature to the tips of your fingers because your fingers are different lengths. And uh, I just, you know, pretty much think that uh, on my panel, I'd like to try that because uh, I've never tried anything like that. I've not played on any of the uh, the candy cabs, I guess you would say, the Astro City cabs or anything. And uh, I always thought, you know, reading about it, that it would be interesting to try because they say that uh, this is actually for like fighting games, which I love. This actually helps you kind of increase your speed since the buttons are actually closer to your fingertips. You're not reaching and stretching your fingers as much and uh, it'll reduce fatigue and stuff in your hands and your wrists and uh, just kind of dispense with this old style here. Um, even though 
I'm used to this style and uh, you know my Mortal Kombat's are kind of in that style. If you was to take this and like you know put two buttons, one here and one here, it'd be like a uh, Killer Instinct or Killer Instinct 2 and uh, Street Fighter layouts and stuff. But uh, you know, it's you know I don't know. It's just very very squared off, and I think I want to try something different. You know, I don't want to emulate Mortal Kombat perfectly. You know, even though I'll be playing a good bit of Mortal Kombat games on that cabinet, I'm sure I'm also going to be playing older games, and I'm going to be playing some uh, probably some Japanese fighters and stuff that I've never tried. And I'd really like to give it a shot. And, you know, if it turns out I really hate it, I can always rebuild the top of this control panel. And just change that top board and uh, reattach it to the hinge on this box and just make me a whole new panel. And maybe even keep both of them to uh, have them interchangeable. But i got a feeling I'm going to like it. Um, I was a little bit kind of questionable about making a different layout for both the left and the right player. Let me move this sheet with the American layout out of the way. But, uh, see if we set this up on the control panel board here, don't know if I can get this all in the shot, but uh, something similar to that, probably vertically it's gonna be a little bit lower, so you want a little bit of the board for your wrist to rest on, but uh, you see how the button layout is just slightly changed, just like you've taken the entire button layout and just uh, twisted it slightly when you're going from player one to player two. And um, you know, player two, it looks maybe a little bit more lined up if you wanted to kind of you know start using this as compared to a six button Street Fighter layout or a five button Mortal Kombat layout. Or a five, or we well, would say a six button layout for like Mortal Kombat 3 and 4 with the run button. You would think this right here might be just a little easier to adapt to because like those six buttons there could kind of feel a little more like the five buttons on a Mortal Kombat cab. And then that button right there could be your run button. And you would just ignore that button there unless you wanted to configure it to play with that button for some reason. But um, this one right here being a little more tilted looks... Uh, a little more comfortable for your hands. If you see my fingertips there, it's like my fingers line up almost perfectly. It seems like my pinky might have just a little bit of reaching to do, just to line up perfectly with those spots there. And uh, you know the lower ones also. So if your hand was resting down on here, you'd be able to hit these buttons really easy. And this one might have a little reaching, but then you could just lower your hand to hit the lower buttons, or keep your hands in this position where you can reach up and down. For the buttons pretty easily. Now I'm not going to know exactly how this is going to work out until I maybe mock me up some uh, cardboard templates and maybe insert some buttons and just try it out. You know, just uh, make kind of a mock control panel. But I got a feeling I'm going to like it. And uh, right now I'm just going to start positioning these. And uh, I've got to leave enough room in the center for that trackball that we have from Ultimark. So uh, like over here, we want to get the position over enough to where. It will be close to the side of the board, but not so close that the buttons are going to have problems mounting under the uh, control panel into the box. You don't want to get it so close to the side that either your joystick base or buttons or anything are just crammed up against the side of the control panel box because you're going to have a very slight lip of this overhanging your box and then you got to uh, leave an allowance for the three quarters inch of the box itself. So you can't just cram this up to the side, you got to leave room for the base. And that right there, just looking at it myself, it looks like it's going to be a little too close because you have a square base. You have to measure all four for your joystick Then you got three quarters of an inch for your box that's going to be underneath and then you got a very slight overhang with this. I can't remember how much overhang I left, maybe half an inch. And uh, then on the other side, you have to allow for just the button nuts, basically, that are going to be under the buttons. So that really probably would be pretty close to about as close as you'd want to get there and leave room for the half inch overhang and three quarters inch for the box. But you probably want to come back a little more. You don't want to get too close, and I'd probably like to leave a half inch to an inch of space so that when this closes down, there might be a clip or something that locks this in place, and I want to leave allowance for that. So getting it just as close to the edge but leaving some allowance for stuff like that and then still have room in the center for the trackball that we're going to mount. And I have to measure out for the footprint of the trackball and make sure it's going to mount under there and still leave room between the uh, button nuts that mount these buttons and the base for this joystick. And it's going to be kind of a tight fit because I didn't make a very large control panel. But I'm definitely going to make that work somehow. And we're going to get eight buttons in on each one of these. Even if it comes down to having to take and uh, move the entire button slightly closer to the base of the joystick if possible, then that might be something we have to do. 
but uh, we can easily mock that up. We can get out some uh, uh, button nuts and lay them in the positions of these and uh, get out like a joystick base or a complete joystick, uh, the HAP competition, set it in place and kind of do a mock up with some measurements and all and uh, even cut out a piece of uh, cardboard and take the piece of cardboard and uh, actually drill physical holes in it, insert the buttons temporarily and uh, just see how everything lines up and see if it sits on top of the uh, control box and you know everything looks like you're going to have plenty of clearance and we may end up doing that and uh, show you some of the results as we go along okay guys getting started with my placement for my buttons and my joysticks first thing I did is took and flipped my control panel box over it's pretty much in the same position that it would be if we are uh, mounting up to the cabinet except for with this uh, bevel here is that's where it's going to be meeting right around the place where the uh, bottom of the monitor bezel is that bevel cut will mate up to that so that'll be like away from the player and towards the monitor of the cabinet so this is you know this side right here is going to be the side where your buttons and your joystick stick up from well I just flip the box upside down the uh, tapered end of this box is going to be facing the player and the fatter end of the box is going to be facing the machine so I just flipped it over kept it in that type of an orientation and I allotted for this bevel here because this bevel we just don't we don't want to count that so we took off three-eighths of an inch there and moved the front of the box back three-eighths of an inch and we offset the sides by half an inch on each side that's how much overhang we're gonna have so they're offset by half an inch and in the front we have an overhang of about one and one-eighth inch so I lined it up as perfectly as I could get it and of course this being handmade it was not dead perfect I think really the only uh, discrepancy that I had is maybe right here where this is supposed to be about a half inch I think it is dead on half an inch and everywhere else like if I measured right here I'm about a half inch and maybe a sixteenth of an inch and then uh, about a half inch and a, an extra sixteenth of an inch or so and about the same there that, that's as close as I could get it on the uh, overhangs and all and it's just because my box when I cut it and put it all together is not dead perfect but I guarantee if you was to measure anything from midway and all it probably wouldn't be dead perfect either so we're really close on as you can tell visually you couldn't take the couldn't tell the difference unless you took out a tape measure or a ruler like that and started measuring so but uh, our overhang in front is dead on one and uh, one eighth inch all the way across and we've got three eighths inch all the way across the back so we're real good there and uh, the only reason I did that here in the back is because I know that, that that taper is just going to uh, it's just going to make up for what that uh, has to do to lean up against the taper of the cabinet where the T-molding on each side of the monitor goes up you know that's uh, that's tapered it's not sh it's not straight it's like you don't have 90 degrees after the control panel you know going up the front where the monitor is so the control panel box it is going to go dead up against the cabinet there at kind of a 90 degree angle so we just offset it by three eighths of an inch to a lot for that and it sounds you know I don't know how to explain this as, as perfectly as what you would see once we were putting this up to the cabinet so you'll see eventually but uh, we just outlined this box in this position once we had it centered perfectly and we used a pencil just to mark around it you know and so now we're going to remove the box so we'll set our pencil and our ruler out of the way and let me set the camera down for just a second and I'll tell you what I'll cut and I'll come back I'll remove the box here okay I moved the box out of the way it's just kind of hard to handle with the camera in one hand because that's a pretty heavy box actually it weighs several pounds but uh, anyway you can see our marks here and we marked all around the outside perimeter of the box and that just lets us know that uh, if we get to mounting things we need to leave that much space for the overhang outside the dimensions of the cabinet and uh, what I can do after that is I can come and actually make a reference point about three quarters of an inch in and make a, another rectangle inside of this and I can use my uh, framing square and do that or I can just put some small lines and dots you know every few inches down through here just to let myself know that we have to lock for the thickness of the box too because this box here the plywood is almost three quarters of an inch and uh, that overhang that we trace is the outside uh, perimeter of the box and we want to make sure that we allot for the thickness of this wood too before we go lining up any any type of cuts in the top panel for buttons or, or joystick bases or anything so we're going to come back in and uh, measure in three quarters of an inch on each of these lines 
and uh, just make us some lines up and up and down across through there and uh, just make sure we got that marked off so we're going to do that now we'll be, we'll be right back okay we've got our lines marked off here so now we have that uh, extra thickness of the control panel box accounted for so that when we're doing our layout it's almost like it's giving us a uh, transparent view of what's underneath the finished product here so that we don't line up our joysticks or our buttons in such a way that it's going to bump into these and uh, pretty much you know you could take this as just a transparent view of exactly where the uh, the bottom box is going to line up under here and just use that to uh, kind of offset your buttons or your joystick away from that to give it a little clearance except for maybe the back you just want to give a little more clearance in the back you don't want to put any buttons too close to this because if you think about it your control panel is going to be sitting up and since it's going to be set at an upward angle once you reach the back of the box you're going to lose some clearance back there uh, if you just think about it here's the box and once your panel gets all the way up to this point and it's sticking up there if you was to take and say oh okay I have some clearance like right here to put a button and it's maybe one of those long hat buttons if you put it too close to the back of this box once it's inserted all the way down through there the bottom and the micro switch and the wiring is actually going to be you know it's, it's going to be coming down at an angle like that and eventually you may run into the back of the box and not have room to snap in your micro switch and connect your wires or the button itself may not seat all the way down into the top of the panel because this right here is going to get in your way so you've got to account for that just because there's a slope to it and uh, you know just give yourself just enough room so that you know you're not cramming buttons up within the last inch or so of uh, this upper panel if you was to say oh I can mount a box uh, excuse me I can mount a button right here because that's gonna clear then by the time the length of that button goes down and your micro switch and all is connected it's gonna be bumping into the back of the box it's just not gonna work so just make sure you leave yourself a little extra clearance you know maybe maybe leave yourself an extra inch or so and um, you can do some measuring and stuff beforehand and some trial and error with a scrap piece of wood just to make sure it is going to clear and that's a good idea to do so but uh, we got this marked out and we can kind of start maybe working on a layout but we might want to mock it up first with cardboard before we actually do this so we might make a kind of a duplicate of this on a piece of cardboard and insert some buttons and everything so I'll just figure out where we're going to go from this point just doing a little measuring here guys these are the Suzo Hap buttons the uh, Hap competition style are uh, they're the concave not convex concave as is in the concave end they detent in on the surface if it was convex it would be raised kind of like uh, maybe on like some Xbox controllers how they're kind of bubbled up but uh, these are the ones that are on all these uh, cabs that I have around here, all the midways. They're all like that, and that's what I'm used to. Uh, I have actually found, you know, even though some people say that the uh, convex ones that stick out give you a little quicker response, these hurt my fingers less. I notice my fingers get kind of tender on the fingertips if I'm using like Xbox controllers that have uh, convex buttons and stuff on them. And uh, I don't know, it just seems to create a harder pressure point on the end of my finger. And since this is kind of concaved in to the natural convexness of your fingertip it seems like it's easier because it distributes the uh, the pressure evenly on the tip of your finger whereas a convex puts it all on one point of your finger when you're pressing and uh, I just I like these better and that's what I'm going to use because I'm used to them anyway and uh, you know you can find good prices for these you can get a whole kit of them on eBay for about thirty something to forty something dollars shipped and uh, usually it's enough to do a, a whole panel but uh, if you take and center these buttons up on these little diagrams you see you have just a little bit of uh, room around them and uh, you can take the nuts I have two nuts here sitting on there and uh, that's actually leaving you enough room to allow for the nuts to go on the back and there are some uh, buttons by Simetsu I think they call it and stuff like that that they uh, say that sometimes these uh, these layouts you need a little more space in between your buttons and stuff because you can actually uh, I guess get those uh, button nuts on there or something but I'm not familiar with those buttons at this moment I haven't used any of them I just need to make sure that we've got clearance for the type we're going to use 
and it looks like with these in here we're, we're not going to have any problems at all because that, that outline there is the exact size of the button nut and uh, there's going to be probably a quarter inch spacing between any of the nearest buttons and the button nut so that will leave enough room to slide the tool up in there and tighten the nuts up and won't have any trouble. Um, I had thought about uh, double drilling these holes. Uh, first drilling a larger hole that would accommodate the entire button nut and then have just a, a hair bit of space around it and uh, you know just to make sure you can get the uh, tool in there, the button nut tool to tighten them up and then uh, continue the hole on through the entire control panel with just enough diameter which would be one and one eighth inch for these buttons themselves just to kind of make it look a little niftier but with the amount of buttons I have to do and uh, just thinking about it I don't really see the necessity it's just a little neater and all that will be seen from the inside of the control panel which I'm you know I'm all for neatness and the cool factor of having it look that neat but I really don't think it's necessary I think if I just make a, a one and one eighth inch hole drilled through with a spade bit that I bought and you can buy the more expensive Forstner bits or even put something like this in a uh, drill press and use a Forstner bit or something like that to drill through it but it's not completely necessary and the Forstner bits are really expensive um, I have seen some Forstner bits go for between twenty to fifty dollars depending on the size and as you get larger with a Forstner bit I mean one bit may very well cost you forty something to sixty bucks you know and uh, this size in particular it might have been a twenty something Oh, excuse the phone ringing. A twenty-something to thirty-dollar Forstner bit, and you could buy a one and one eighth inch uh, spade bit for less than ten dollars. So that's the route I went. I think I probably paid maybe five or six bucks for the bit I got. But uh, maybe the answer machine will pick that up. But anyway, uh, we got our bag of buttons here. This is what is going to go in the control panel when it's all finished. We're going with mostly a, a blue. Uh, button for all the main buttons that you're going to be using to play with. I did buy a couple extra red and greens. The greens are going to be used for your coin ends. I know a lot of people like to go with a coin mech. I'm not going to do that at this time. I may come back later and modify the front panel to put a coin mech in and a coin door if I want to do that, but just not sure at the moment. And um, the red buttons, I got them for like function buttons, things like escape and uh, you know stuff like that in MAME um, to escape out of the game, to go back to the main menus, to kind of move through the main menus and, and do things like that. Uh, we might possibly have something like that set up for volume up and down, but uh, currently uh, I'm just going to try to modify the potentiometer that came with the uh, PC speakers that we're installing in the cabinet. I'm going to probably try to modify it in some way so that uh, we can use that potentiometer to move the volume up and down. I kind of like that idea better anyway. Um, you know, I just, it's, it's kind of a mechanical feel to it and I kind of like that better than you know, to me, pressing a button to go up and down in increments for the volume, which you can do that. There's ways to, to hook that into a PC and uh, to get it to uh, move the settings for volume up and down inside of uh, a Windows-based PC. But uh, to be honest, I would rather, uh, I'd rather do it mechanically. You know, I'd rather do it through the amplifier of the speakers and leave the volume that's uh, operated from Windows through the sound card. I'd rather leave that at like a steady, you know, a steady adjustment, you know and uh, we'll adjust it up somewhere between a quarter and halfway of what the sound card can do and uh, then just use the mechanical potentiometer to adjust the volume. I think that'll work out best. But I haven't made up my idea, you know, or my mind yet where I'm going to uh, just put the potentiometer in such a place that you can uh, maybe extend a knob off of it onto the control panel or whether I'm just going to have it mounted inside, inside some type of opening under the control panel or in the front of the main cab. But uh, I'll figure that out eventually. But right now we want to get out one of our HAP competition joysticks and uh, check on some of the clearance with it. Hey, I was just looking through some boxes there and I've got my uh, competitions that I'm going to put in this uh, in this cabinet and uh, they are they're blue ones that kind of resemble the blue buttons. I think the color is just a little bit different than that but they're from HAP and they're HAP competitions. And uh, they came in a box of joysticks that I got a couple of years back when I bought a monitor for the Mortal Kombat 1. And the guy just threw a bunch of stuff in, uh, you know, for a special deal for me and a Gauntlet Dart Legacy board set and all this other stuff. And I was able to salvage a few joysticks and buttons and stuff out of the, the box of miscellaneous items that he gave me. And uh, I salvaged two, uh, two bases from HAP Competition sticks and uh, 
two uh, sticks themselves that were blue and they look like they were in really good shape you know I mean they didn't look completely brand new but I wanted to keep them and they had good micro switches on them and a good actuator and I just you know I mingled them together and made two good joysticks out of them and that's what I want to use and they're packed up in a stack of boxes I've got back there I just don't feel like going back through there and getting into it right now but um uh, up on top I had some uh, extra buttons and joysticks that Adidas 1984X, a guy who uh, you may know here from YouTube, had left me when he came over and just gave me some extra swag when he was at one of the LAN parties here a few months back. And uh, I got to look and I said, well these bases are compatible, they're exactly the same. These are, these are I think HAP Supers, I think these are Super joysticks and not HAP Competition. And uh, you can take a look at the base of them, they're a little bit different than a HAP Competition. But the uh, the the cutout or the template that you might use to make screw holes for these joysticks are compatible with the uh, HAP competitions so uh, the screw alignment's the same and all and it's not a perfect square um, I just measured them out and they're three inches by three and a half inches and uh, when you mount them in like a Mortal Kombat I went ahead and measured all my Mortal Kombat 2 and my Mortal Kombat 1 um, the base like the three and a half inch uh, side would go up and down on like a Mortal Kombat and uh, from left to right you would have the three inch dimension so we gotta make sure from the center point of our joystick on our control panel that we have an inch and a half on the left and an inch and a half on the right to make up the three inches of the base and um, up and down you've got to have uh, uh, what is that is it uh, one and three eighths inches I think that's right um, so you would have that much above and below the joystick itself so that you have clearance for the base so you want to make sure that you account for that and uh, we should be fine it's really the left to right that we want to be concerned with because we know we're going to have clearance from that diagram from the buttons because you know those uh, diagrams are made so that you can mount a joystick and it won't interfere with buttons we can measure it out and make sure but the important part is that the buttons for player one on that control panel leave enough clearance for the trackball and uh, the trackball doesn't impede uh, mounting of the joystick or the joystick doesn't impede the mounting of the trackball. So we've got to make sure there's room for the base of the joystick on player two, the base and the uh, mechanics of the trackball for the center, and uh, the button nuts and everything that are going to be under the panel for player one. So we've got to make sure we leave some space in for that and all. But now we've got their dimensions for our joystick and we know how to work with that. So all we have to do is uh, account for that and for the width of the trackball. So we've got to get the trackball out and measure that.